Hi everyone, Hermano here again and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to install Arch Linux on an MBR system with encryption. So I already downloaded my ISO and burned it to the USB stick and I booted my laptop from there and now I'm connected via SSH. So I have already an IP because I have an Ethernet cable connected. If you have Wi-Fi, you will type in now Wi-Fi dash menu and hit enter and you'll be asked to select your network. You can enter your password and you'll have an IP. So I don't need to do this, so I'll cancel the command and we can get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to synchronize the time with the internet. So I'll type in time date CTL set dash NTP true and hit enter. And now we can partition the disks. So for that, I'm going to use this time CF disk. So I'll type in CF disk and hit enter and select label type. So because it's an MBR system, I'm going to select DOS in this case and hit enter. And now I want to create three partitions. I want to create a boot partition, a swap partition, and a root partition. So I'll hit new. And for the boot partition, I'm going to go for 100 megabytes. So I'll type in 100M and hit enter. And yes, it's a primary partition, so I'll hit enter. And now I need to make it bootable. So I scroll to the left here and hit bootable. Now I can scroll down to free space and hit enter again. And I want the swap file to be two gigabytes, so I'll type in 2G and hit enter. And yes, the primary, so I'll hit enter here. And going to the right on type, hit enter. And I'll select the upper line here, Linux swap and hit enter. Now I'll go down again to the free space and hit new. And now I'll accept the default because I want the root partition to take the remainder of the disk. So I'll just hit enter. And yes, it's a primary, so it's fine. And it's already a Linux file system, so that's fine. So now I can go to the right and hit right. And yes, I'm sure. So I'll type in yes and hit enter. And now we are done. So we can go to quit and hit enter here. And I'll clean up the terminal. Now I'll pull up LSBLK and we have our three partitions there. So we created the partitions. Now we can format them. So let's begin with the boot partition. So we'll type in mkfs.ext4. This is an MBR system, so it can be an xt4 slash dev slash sda1 and hit enter. Now we can also make the swap. So we'll type in mkswap slash dev slash sda2 and hit enter. And now we can activate it by typing in swap on slash dev slash sda2 and hit enter. I'll clean up the terminal. Before we can format the third partition, we need to also load some modules in the system. So the first one we're going to load is the crypt module. So we'll type in mod probe dm dash crypt and hit enter. And the next one is the mod module. So we'll pull up the same command with the up arrow and we replace crypt with mod and hit enter. So now we can encrypt the third partition we can reformat it. So we'll do this by typing encrypt setup lux format with capital F and then dash V dash S 512. This is the signature we're going to use dash H space SHA 512 and then the partition name. So in my case slash dev slash SDA3 and hit enter. And yes, I'm sure. So I'll type in yes in capital letters and hit enter. Now I have to enter the passphrase. So I'll type in mine and retype it again. It's going to take a moment to verify the passphrase. So now before we can format this partition, we need to open it because now it's encrypted. So we'll type in crypt setup open and then the partition name. So in my case, slash dev slash SDA3. And then the name that we want to give to this partition, which is going to recognize by the mapper after. In my case, I'm going to do CR underscore root and hit enter. Then enter the passphrase. And there you go. Now we can format also this partition. So we'll type in mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash mapper slash the partition name we chose before for the encryption. So in my case, CR underscore root and hit enter. And there you go. Now I clean up the terminal. 
Now we can mount these partitions. So first let's mount the root partition, which is the encrypted one. And to do that, we'll type in mount slash dev slash mapper slash CR underscore root space slash mount and hit enter. Now we need to also mount the boot partition to the boot directory, which does not exist yet. So we'll need to create that. So we'll type in mkdir for make directory slash mount slash boot and hit enter. And now we can mount the boot partition to the boot directory. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash sda1. That was the boot partition slash mount slash boot and hit enter. Now we're ready to install the base system. So we'll type in packstrap slash mount and then these packages base Linux Linux dash firmware and then an editor, in my case, nano, and hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to install everything, and I'll be back when it's done. So the packages are now installed, so we can clean up the terminal. And now we need to generate the fstab file. So we'll do this by typing in gen fstab dash capital U slash mount. And we're going to append this to slash mount slash etsy slash fstab and hit enter now if we output the content of fstab we'll see what's in there so we'll type in cat slash mount slash etsy slash fstab and hit enter and as you can see we have the first partition is our root partition we have also our boot partition and the swap partition is also there so everything looks great we can clean up the terminal now we can move into the installation by exiting the installer and we'll do this by typing in arch dash root slash mount and hit enter. So now we need to take care of a few files. So the first one is to take care of our local time. So we'll type in ln dash sf slash user slash share slash zone info slash Europe slash Zurich. This is in my case, you'll have to replace this accordingly. Space slash Etsy slash local time and hit enter. Now we can synchronize the hardware clock to the system clock. So we'll type in HW clock space dash dash sys to HC and hit enter. There you go. Now we need to work on the locales. So we'll type in nano slash Etsy slash locale dot gen and hit enter. Scroll down until we find the locale we want, in my case, English US. The first one here, which has UTF-8 and delete the hashtag and then hit Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. Now we can generate the locales by typing in locale dash gen and hit enter. And now we need to configure the locale.com file. So we'll type in nano slash Etsy slash locale dot conf and hit enter and we enter here this string lang equal in underscore us dot utf dash eight and then control o and enter to save the file control x to exit the editor now we can create the host name so we'll type in nano slash etsy slash host name and hit enter my machine is going to be arch that's fine then control o and enter to save the file control x to exit the editor now we can also edit the hosts file. So we'll type in nano slash etsy slash hosts and hit enter. And put in these lines 127.0.0.1 tab localhost. Next line colon colon one tab tab localhost again. And the last line 127.0.1.1 tab the host name. So in my case arch dot local domain tab and again the host name in my case arch you'll have to change this accordingly and then control o enter to save the file control x to exit the editor now we can give a password to the root user so we'll type in pass wd and hit enter type in a new password and retype it and now we are ready to install some packages so we'll type in pacman dash s so the first one grab it's our bootloader then we have network manager. We have also network dash manager 
dash applet. We have also wireless underscore tools. We have WPA underscore supplicant. We have also dialog. We have also OS dash prober. And then M tools, DOS FS tools, and then two development packages. One is base dash devil and Linux dash headers. And when you're ready, you just hit enter and accept the defaults by hitting enter and proceed with installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment again to install everything and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so the packages are now installed, so I clean up the terminal. Now we need to still edit two files. The first one is the grab file under the Etsy default. So we'll type in nano slash Etsy slash default slash grab and hit enter. And we want to scroll down to the fifth line here when it says grab command line Linux. And we enter now this command for the encrypted partition. So crypt device equal then the partition name. So slash dev slash sda3 colon and then the partition name we gave to the mapper as well, which in my case was cr underscore root. And when you're ready, you just hit control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. Now we need to also edit the MK init CPIO file. So we'll type in nano slash Etsy slash MK init CPIO.conf and hit enter. Now we need to scroll down here to the hooks section until we find the hooks line. And we'll have to enter between the block and file systems on space and then encrypt and a space after that. And then again, control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. Now we need to regenerate the image. So we'll type in MK init CPIO space dash P Linux and hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to rebuild the image here. And there you go. So I'll clean up the terminal again. Now we can install grub. So let's do this by typing in grub dash install dash dash target equal i386 dash pc and then the disk name not the partition name but the disk name so in my case slash dev slash sda and hit enter no error reported now we can generate the configuration file so we'll type in grub dash mk config dash o then slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and hit enter and i clean up the terminal now i want to add a new user so i'll type in user add dash m dash capital g and then we'll have to do with the sudo we'll do this later and then the username in my case i'll use this time ferrari and hit enter now i want to change the password for me so i'll type in pass wd and then the username and hit enter and enter the new password. Retype it. And there you go. Now we want to give this user pseudo power. So we'll type in editor equal nano and then vice pseudo and hit enter. And we'll scroll down to the wheel group and we have to be careful because there are two of those. And we'll select the first one when it says wheel all equal all and uncomment this line. And then hit Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. Now, the last thing I want to do is to enable Network Manager so that we have internet when we start the system again. So I'll type in system CTL enable Network Manager with capital N and capital M and hit enter. And there you go. Now we can exit the installation and return to the installer by typing exit. And we unmount all partitions by typing in U mount dash A and hit enter. Target is busy, that's fine. So now we can reboot the system. And if everything went well, we will be greeted by the grub bootloader. We will be asked to enter the passphrase for our encrypted disk and we'll meet back at the login prompt. So I'll see you in a moment. So there you go, the installation was successful. I saw the grub bootloader and I was asked for the password and now I'm logged in with my username here. 
So from this point, you would install your graphic drivers. You could install also the display server like Xorg or Wayland, and then the display manager and the desktop environment of your choice. But for this video, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure you like it by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos. Subscriptions really helps us out, guys. And if there's anything specific you want me to cover or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.